you were just in Maui. You know, you've been chasing after whales or going around. You know, you take in events. You also just go and well, check them out. Well, it's kind of fun. I mean, it's kind of like trout fishing in a way. You know, I love the place they live. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I'm going to catch a fish, it might as well be a trout in a beautiful stream. I'm so, going to let him go anyhow. So I'm talking about whales going from Alaska to Hawaii, Mexico, and Central America. How's that sound for a trip? <laughs> and so you went to Maui for what purpose? Well, to see how many whales have made it from Alaska to Maui. They're smart. They know when to go to Hawaii when the weather's really pretty. Mm -hmm. And so we managed to get over there for a couple of weeks. Uh, Chris had a conference, and I got to study whales for two weeks and do field work on taking pictures and looking at behaviors that I'm interested in right now. What kind of whales are we looking at? These are humpback whales, the ones that everybody is familiar with because they're they're kind of like the athletes of whales. They're like basketball players that do a lot of aerial stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. so we see them. But the other whales, they're submerged all the time, so we don't see them. So obviously, the more we see them, the more we think, wow, this is great. But we just see them this tiny little fraction of the time that they jump out of the water or mm -hmm. they come up for a breath. And the rest of the time, you know, almost 100 percent, they're underwater and we don't really see them. Now, recently in Puget Sound, they had... It was a couple of gray whales and orcas were attacking them. They said there was an incident. Yeah, and it, well, I didn't see the incident, but I can guess what it is, is orcas are after the gray whale calf. And they are what they call the wolves of the sea. They are just predators for that reason. They're wolves. But this is their role in life. You know, they're meat eaters. They eat fish and they eat seals and whatever they can get their hands on, or their jaws on, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so that's what I assume happened is what they do is they attack. They can't take down the big female adult gray whale, but they can attack the calf mm -hmm. and because it's small and young. And they usually brutally attack it and essentially drown it. And then they don't eat much of, the, of it. They eat like the tongue. And the God, rest of it sinks gross. around. Well, it's gross, but it's a food supply for all the other fish that Get the okay. munch off the right. stuff. I'm starting to feel In the better. ocean, ocean, nothing, nothing is wasted. Mm -hmm. And so all of that whale meat will be consumed as it sets down on the bottom and the microbes completely digest everything and just leaves the skeleton. Now the skeleton is going to be surface area for other organisms to grow on. Mm -hmm. And so it just completely is used. So, and, you know, when you think about we lose one or two and it's a big deal in the in the days before we knew anything, before we hunted them, they would probably just, there was thousands and thousands of whales. This happened at an enormous scale compared to now. Mm -hmm. so, so orcas do, they hunt in groups, huh? Yep, they do. Hunt. And they're, they're not filter feeders, which means they don't eat microorganisms. And they go after the young, defenseless calves that they can subdue with brute force, just like a whale would segment something out of a herd of elk, these do the same thing. Mm -hmm. The only thing is just the big mom, and she'll try to block them and do this stuff, but uh, um, they just essentially either wear out the calf or give up and go hunt something else. Yeah, you know, yeah. they'll go have steelhead for dinner that night, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so you went to Maui. Yeah. So uh, put, what's the news coming from Maui? What's happening? Well, Maui, I keep thinking, is sort of the headquarters of the world for whales and whale migration. The way the cycle goes in the Pacific is whales move from Alaska to Hawaii and to Mexico and Central America. And when they move from, when winter hits Alaska, they head south to have their babies and to mate. And after that ritual, then they head back up to Alaska just as spring comes, just like now they're swimming up there. And now they start feeding in Alaska. Uh -huh. Or they swim up from, you know, Hawaii or Mexico or Central America. So when I get the chance to go to Hawaii, it's in the season that they're there having their babies or the males are battling to have a prime female. And she's kind of being a fussy budget, you know, she just takes oh. whoever. No, no, she's very selective. <laughs> and so they're constantly battling. How, and how long is this this battle? I mean, when does she finally pick it can, one? It can go on for three or four weeks, you know, and it depends on her ester cycle. And so, you know, it's, but they have a decision that they make because these big escorts, the females are the bigger of the species, but these animals are like 30, 40 tons. 
And there's six or eight or nine or ten of them following a female and her calf. Oh, man. This is what I was photographing on this trip. This is some of the behavior so we're, stuff we're talking some at. conflict. Well, 40-ton animal coming out of the water 30 feet and <laughs> crashing down on a slightly smaller 35-ton animal. Right. Okay. Hit first, jaw down, kaboom, and the splashes and the stuff. And, you know, whales normally st- swim in a very gentle sideways, but I've got pictures of them being thrust sideways and their pectoral fins sticking up out of the water. God, I mean, huge. I mean, it's I, like, I it's, mean, do they live? Do well, they, yeah, no, this, these are just bashing into each other, just so like, like, like horn so, sheep do. So like a rutting. It's, okay, it's so exactly like, okay. that. Okay. All right. So yeah. we've talked before about... Whales being the canaries of the ocean, and that reference right. was to the miners who took the canary down. If the canary smelled poisonous gases they couldn't detect and died, they got out of there. Right. It was the signal to leave. And so, but the reason you had shared the thing about... Uh, uh, Whales are the canaries of the ocean is because they're eating in the primary food chain. Primary food source is, you know, everything comes from the photosynthesis of the sunlight, we're talking really small. The, oh, microscopic. So, yeah. I mean, so these guys, how, much, how, much, how much do they have to eat? Uh, about 10 tons a day. They eat a lot, but they gain a lot. And during their migration to Hawaii and back, they can lose half their body weight. Plus, the females are nursing the young calves. So they're really pumping out a lot of energy and they lose a lot of body mass. That's amazing. We were talking about uh, whales that live in Alaska and migrate to Hawaii and Mexico and Central America during the winter months of Alaska. And they do that simply because they want to go to a place where it's more convenient, easier on them to have their babies, get them through their first month or two, and then mate if they are in season. And then they swim back up to Alaska to start eating for the next six or seven months. Hmm. So this migration pattern is going on for thousands of years. And these whales are now a recovering conservation program that we're able to, to study and learn more about the whales and their migration patterns. That's one of the things that I've been interested in. So as, as we look at them, we find that we've gone from an almost extinct population of less than a percent or two to about 10% of the original number of whales that were uh, humpback whales that were in the Pacific, you know, that lived in Alaska, Hawaii, Mexico, etc. <laughs> well, now, if you extrapolate that, we've got 35 to 40,000, and that's 10%. So if you think about it, that means that there was 400 to 500,000 whales going from Alaska to Hawaii to Mexico to Central America. I mean, there was a lot, a lot that's of whales. Like a, that's like a salmon run. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, but there was a lot of salmon in those days. Yeah. There was a lot of yeah. everything different in the ocean than there is now. When you went to Maui, though, you were talking about, you noticed that there's less whales. Well, one of the things that I posted on the website in the middle of January was that the science and the whale researchers were noticing that there are fewer whales showing up in Hawaii, and they didn't know whether it was because of El Nino or this or that. But they know from our population estimates that we should expect more every year. So, you know, they figure there's around 10,000 whales that migrate from Alaska to Hawaii and the surrounding islands there. What people were noticing is that they hadn't arrived. When I got there near the end of February, the last couple of weeks of February, we went out and we saw whales, fortunately, in situations that I was looking for for behavior photos. But people were saying there's not as many there this year. And so I got notice from one of the groups, Pacific Whale Foundation, that this year's whale counts, where they have 12 locations where they've done this for years, people go out and they sight whales and notice behaviors and all that. Last year, there was like 1,600, no, 1,450 of them. Okay, sightings of whales in these 12 locations. This year, there was 732, almost exactly half. So what they saw at the beginning of the season was less whales coming. And what they saw in the count time was half the number of whales. And so we know the whales exist. So everybody's scratching their head now saying, where do they go? They can't hide. They're pretty big dudes, you know. (laughs) Huh. And so there may be another number of factors. I know that the salmon industry, from what I've read, they're expecting the lower. It had to do with more of the cyclical thing. But but these guys aren't really in the cycle. They're already big and live. This whole thing that we've talked about in the past, microorganisms, those are the foundation, you know, the basic primary food source for the ocean. 
the thing that it, that you notice with microorganisms is when you get to the primary source, it's the sunlight that comes in and creates photosynthesis, and that traps the energy of the sunlight. And then all the organisms after that feed on it, mm -hmm. okay? Unless you're a plant like a tree, and a tree captures the sunlight, photosynthesis in the leaves, and it produces its energy. That's why when you cut a tree down, you can burn it. It's got all that stored energy, okay? Sun power. So that's what we see in the ocean. Now, as the ocean temperatures and chemistries and currents and climate changes, these mixes of cocktails of these microorganisms to the quality of the water of the ocean are going to cause different equilibrium to happen. And that will then shift down because all of the species that feed on that stuff are built on top of those guys. So the steelhead eat this, they eat that, but these all, fundamentally, somebody in the steelhead food chain was eating microorganisms. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason whales can get so big <laughs> they is they changed. go directly to the source, and they have certain, like humpback whales, have a filtering system to where they can just gulp in, you know, several hundred gallons of water and filter out the microorganisms. And, you know, they feed 10 to so tons a day. A whale that survives, mm -hmm. how long do they live to be? Well, 30 to 50 years, probably, somewhere so, like that. And how much are they consuming every day? Well, they, they feed not all the time because they don't feed much when they're migrating. And like when they're down in Hawaii, there's nothing to eat in those areas. They're there for the protection and for having their babies. Yeah, it is. Um, they're smart. Yeah. <laughs> they get beefed up during the summer in Alaska and then right, that they, carries they them. They gorge themselves, yeah. That, you know, they might have a snack on some minnows on the way down, you know, off the pier somewhere. But they're not eating like they are in Alaska. Mm -hmm. And their whole behavior changes in Alaska where they do these bubble net rings. And we'll talk about that sometime. Yeah, well, that's, that's, right. that's something that everybody should see if they can, because it's amazing. Lots of the whales that, not the humpback whales, but other whale species that have migrated down to Mexico and the Gulf, yeah. they are now headed north. Hmm. Okay, that's where you heard about that uh, orca incident in the Puget Sound, where a bunch of orcas attacked the, the gray whale. Yeah, gray whale, yeah. yeah. What's the bigger, gray whale oh, or... Yeah. Oh, the humpback or, whales? Yeah, the humpbacks. No, the gray and the blue whales are way bigger, okay? Mm -hmm. But they don't do you, they do not do any of the aerial stuff you see humpbacks. And they, all they do is sit around looking big. Uh, no, they're pretty active. They swim deep and dive for long, long periods of time, so you don't get a chance to see them much. That must be such stuff. a remarkable experience to have a close encounter with one of those. Oh, it is, and I've talked to people like, well, you had Glenn on the show, mm -hmm. you know, that have had close interactions. I met up with one of my photographer friends in Maui, and he actually dives and does photographs, underwater photographs of whales, and they are amazing. These animals are gigantic, and they swim around like little fairies in the water. No, let's say like little canaries.